Police Scotland may struggle to buy new body cams next year after claims totalling more than £20 million are levied against them. A family who were given the wrong body to bury are bringing legal action against South Yorkshire Police. A Northumbria Police Constable fined after a momentary lapse in concentration breaks a man's neck. This and more coming up. Don't forget, these reports are daily, Monday to Friday. Please remember to subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any future uploads. And if you do appreciate the work I do and understand that many of these topics result in little to no YouTube monetization, please consider, if you can, joining the channel Patreon for as little as just £3 per month to help me continue providing this content. Well, hello, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, in his outies, and in between us. My name's Dan, and welcome back to another Pat Reports. It's Thursday. 27th of August 2020. Now I want to start today with a correction on yesterday's report. I'm not quite sure how I missed it, but I did miss it and it was pointed out to me last night. And as always, I will I would never shy away from an apology if I get something wrong. In Pat Reports, The Bad Bits, our first story about former boarding school teacher who was given a 19 year jail sentence last year for crimes against children. It was said that the additional three and a half years he was given was to run concurrent to the sentence he is now serving. And for some reason, although I know what concurrent means, I was somehow thinking of consecutive at the time. It might have just been wishful thinking. However, nothing has actually been added to his sentence as concurrent simply means the additional three and a half years will be served as part of his 19 year sentence. And so he didn't actually get any extra time. A minor mistake, but one I wanted to rectify. Anyway, on with the show. The Crown Office and Police Scotland might be struggling to buy new equipment soon after lawyers for the Lord Advocate admitted that every stage of the prosecution of David Whitehouse and Paul Clark following their first court appearance was unlawful as it was malicious and conducted without probable cause, even after previously denying they did anything wrong. Mr Whitehouse and Mr Clark were arrested following events surrounding Rangers' financial position last decade two men were, when the two men were appointed administrators of the club in February 2012. The club was liquidated in October 2012 and both Mr Whitehouse and Mr Clark left their positions. Police then arrested Mr Whitehouse and charged him with offences relating to businessman Craig White's takeover of Rangers in 2011. However, the Crown Office has now admitted the case against them was unlawful motivated by malice and were yesterday awarded £600,000 by Judge Lord Tyre as an interim payment comprised of £350,000 to David Whitehouse and £250,000 to Paul Clark. The lawyers for the Lord Advocate also admitted that the human rights of both Mr Whitehouse and Mr Clark had been breached at times during the investigation. Both Mr Whitehouse and Paul Clark are seeking a total of £20.8 million from the Crown Office and Police Scotland for wrongful detention, arrest and prosecution. Mr Clark's lawyer, Ian Ferguson QC, condemned the Crown's conduct in the case. He told the court that his client had spent over a million pound in legal expenses. Earlier, Mr Whitehouse's lawyer, Roddy Dunlop QC, said his client had spent the eye-watering amount of 1.8 million on lawyer's fees. Speaking following the Crown admission, Mr Ferguson called on Lord Tyre to make an interim award to the two men. He said it's nothing short of a disgrace that the government has chosen to act in this fashion towards two private citizens. It is only through the determination of Mr Clark and Mr Whitehouse to clear their names that we have got to this point. The bottom line here is that less wealthy people could never have got to this point. In my submission, some award has to be made in this case. Mr Whitehouse of Cheshire has brought a damages claim against the Lord Advocate James Wolfe QC and Police Scotland for £10.5 million. Surrey-based Mr Clark is suing for 10.3 million. And it certainly doesn't look as if Police Scotland will be buying any new X7 tasers anytime soon. So at least you jocks don't have to worry about the more powerful and less accurate tasers to look forward to, unlike the rest of us. Avon and Somerset Police told a victim of vandalism to investigate the crime against himself. Mohammed Muhammad discovered the back windscreen of his car had been smashed one morning earlier this month and was told by police that they couldn't come to investigate it and advised him to ask around in case there was any CCTV of the crime. Muhammad parked his car on August the 15th and came back to it the following morning to find the rear screen smashed and, his, and glass littering the inside of his car. 
After calling the police, Mohammed was told that they couldn't come out and investigate unless there were witnesses or CCTV and suggested to the victim that he should do his own detective work and try and find some. So he did just that and was able to find some CCTV which showed two men walking down the road, initially pushing a large industrial wheelie bin into the front of the car. And then on passing, one of the men repeatedly hit the back windscreen with his elbow until it smashed. Abdihakin Asir from the Bristol Somali Community Association said, we were shocked seeing the victim doing everything he could, but police were just not moving a finger. Police always say report any crime, but now for some neighbourhood reporting isn't enough, he added. A spokesperson for Avon and Somerset Police said, Mr. Mohammed was advised that, that, that without any witnesses or CCTV footage, the police wouldn't launch a full investigation because they're too busy trawling Twitter for hurt feelings, no doubt. But this is an issue. This is a major problem. People are reporting crimes, actual crimes against personal property, and they're not getting investigated. But yet the police are willing, more willing, to actually go and speak to somebody about their thoughts. The family of a man who died whilst in police custody in 1998 are bringing legal action against South Yorkshire Police after it was discovered that the family had wrongly been given the body of a 77-year-old woman to bury in his place 11 years prior, as his body was discovered in a mortuary. Christopher Aldo was 37 when he died, while in handcuffs a post-mortem found he had died due to choking. However, a coroner's jury concluded that he was unlawfully killed in 2000 but the five police constables who stood trial were all acquitted in 2011. Now his sister, Janet, is launching a legal challenge against South Yorkshire Police after reading what's described as excruciatingly painful documents relating to that investigation. Although the police investigated the body mix-up, they concluded in their investigation in 2013, an investigation that after reading the documents, Miss Alder described as not thorough. Janet Alder has been campaigning for justice for her brother for over 20 years and is also hoping to write a book about the events. On a GoFundMe campaign set up to help her raise the money to pay the fees for her case, Ms Alder wrote, I do not believe that a thorough investigation was done. I believe that those responsible are being deliberately protected and I am determined to challenge this investigation. I am determined to get answers and justice for my brother, justice which has been denied to him up to this day. According to Ms Alder, the documents showed there was evidence that was missed out of the final report. Christopher Alder was a decorated paratrooper in Falklands War. Before arriving at the police station, he had been the victim of an assault outside a nightclub and was taken to hospital after staff complained of him being extremely troublesome. Two police constables arrested him to prevent a breach of the peace. After Mr Alder's death, civil rights campaigners were vocal in their beliefs that justice had not been served and it has since become a landmark example of deaths in police custody in the UK. Now, I will link to a GoFundMe page in the description so you can read more about this if you want to. A man from Bristol who admitted to abducting a barmaid's 18-month-old baby boy has been allowed to walk from court after a judge seemed to try and justify his actions by saying, perhaps you were drunk or just odd. 43-year-old Daniel Spiegel was in the Ridge pub in Cheltenham when he was forcibly stopped by locals as he tried to leave the pub with the barmaid's 18-month-old child. Spiegel, originally from the island of, Ars of Sardinia, had denied abduction from the ch of the child by taking him from the custody of his mother on December 1st, 2018, and a jury had been sworn in on Monday, August 24th to try him. But after the first day of the trial, Spiegel pleaded guilty. Now, I have to be honest, the reports about this don't really make a lot of sense to me as... They report that the baby's mum served Speaker with a drink and noticed he was behaving oddly. She saw him go to the pub's pool room, where her son was being looked after by his grandmother and other relatives. Speaker was then seen interacting with the boy and he placed him on a pool table. The boy's mother spotted what was going on and picked her son up off the pool table and put him back on the floor. CCTV footage then showed the toddler running around the pool room and at one stage he was collected by Speaker who picked him up and was seen attempting to leave the pub with him.
how it got to this stage is beyond me, as the boy's grandmother and other relatives were all supposed to be there with him in the pool room. The police were called after the licensee of the pub had watched the CCTV footage. When police arrived, Spiegel told them it was all a bit of a misunderstanding and said he didn't know what his intentions were. He said he was just walking around the pub with the boy and had no intention of running off with him. After a police investigation, police say they found no evidence of predatory behaviour in his background. However, as mentioned a few moments ago, Speeder did change his plea to guilty of abduction on the first day of his trial at Gloucester Crown Court on Monday the 24th of August. The following day, following his new plea, Judge Michael Cullum was able to sentence Speeder. Judge Cullum told him, it's probably every parent's nightmare to have their young child taken. The child at the time of the incident was a young toddler, obviously full of life and full of mischief and enjoying himself in circumstances in which he and his family felt comfortable. You started playing around with the child. Most parents would say your actions in placing the child on the pool table were a rather stupid thing to do and no doubt this was the reaction of the boy's mother when she took her son off you. You had no right to touch that child in any way. Importantly, you had no right to remove the child. You are a man of good character and despite all the police searches, there was nothing to suggest that you were planning to hurt the child or had any sexual or other interests in children. I could not be certain that you had any criminal motives toward that child. I suspect you didn't have a plan and moved to the outside of the pub. Perhaps you were drunk or just odd. But you had no right to remove the child. Your actions crossed the custody threshold and I have to impose a prison sentence. However, I feel that it can be suspended. So even after admitting trying to abduct the child, which could even have been a cry for help in that maybe he's done it before and had just never been caught, and this was his way of getting help without having to actually admit it, the judge decided that a nine-month prison sentence suspended for 12 months was appropriate, albeit he has been ordered to pay a £1,500 fine too. Nine months suspended for 12 for admitting attempted abduction of a child. 18 months suspended for 24 for growing a bit of weed. A Northumbria police constable who broke a man's neck has been spared jail after the judge called the incident a momentary lapse. 38-year-old Andrew Hayes, who works as a detention officer for Northumbria Police, was off duty on the 17th of January this year when he pulled up to a junction of a roundabout next to someone who gave a witness statement after the incident. A Rihanna Frame prosecuting said a witness was waiting in her car at the roundabout on New York Road on January 17th this year when Hayes pulled up in the lane beside her. The defendant made eye contact with her before driving onto the roundabout and hitting the victim on his bike. The victim remembers travelling around the roundabout and the next thing he knows is waking up laying on the ground. The victim was left unconscious and was taken to hospital where it was found that he had suffered a fractured neck, cheek and cuts and bruises. He also had to have seven stitches to an injury on his chin and subsequently had to wear a neck and back brace for eight weeks. In a statement the victim said, the injuries I sustained placed my life on hold for the eight weeks that I was in the neck collar. I'm a very active person, so not being able to get out of my house had a real effect on me. North Tyneside Magistrates Court heard that Hayes hadn't seen the cyclist when he pulled out, as he was behind the bar between the windscreen and driver's window. You mean the blind spot a new driver would fail their driving test for not checking? That bar between the windscreen and the driver's window, you mean? Ah, oh, right. The court was told that Hayes had suffered many sleepless nights since the accident and was extremely remorseful. District Judge Paul Curra doesn't seem to understand the concept of justice as Hayes has, was handed six penalty points, a £300 fine, £30 victim surcharge, which is nothing more than an additional payment to the court and doesn't actually go to a victim, and £85 in costs. However, no mention of any compensation for the victim. District Judge Curra said this momentary lapse in concentration had pretty serious consequences, but nevertheless, it was a momentary lapse. So there you have it. Driving resulting in serious or potentially life-changing injuries can be all but dismissed from serious consequences if you simply tell the court you had a momentary lapse in concentration because you was checking out the fitty in the car next to you. 
Big thank you to channel supporters, one and all, especially channel Patreon supporters. Your support is truly, truly appreciated and really does help. And that's all I have for you today. Please like, please share, please comment and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts as no many of you will. Until next time, stay safe, look after each other, film the police and other officials. Good night all. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like the content and you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so. In the description of every video, there are some links to ways that you're able to help support the channel so I can continue putting out content. If you're unable to help us in that way, hit that subscribe button up the top there. If you haven't already, become a subscriber. That is support enough. Share the videos, comment, like, it all helps. If you're looking for something else to watch, up top there is my latest video. Down the bottom there is a video that YouTube recommends for you.